I, my name Fred Lepart. I, I went by Fred at Warner Gear, but Frederick Lepart, and that's F R E D E R I C K Lepart L E P H A R T. And now, if you don't mind, we're good to go. Yep. All right, we'll start with work now. You've got kind of an interesting story because, and it's on your shirt there. You've got a lot of family members that worked out at Borg Warner. Yeah. Um, and did you always live in Muncie? All my life. When were you born? 1940, May 21st, 1940. And when did you hire in at Warner Gear? Uh, no, or at the, February the 9th, 1959. So you were, what, 19 then, huh? Yeah. What was it like being 19? How many how many brothers and sisters or brothers did you already have working there? At that time, I think they all worked there, but me and my younger brother were the only two was was left, and then the sisters, none of them. I mean, they didn't try to get on, but I worked at a seat cover factory first, and then I went to Borg Warner with the family. Then, did your family help you get the job? Yeah. Well. Dave there, I think he hired in two weeks or two weeks before I did. I mean, when they hired him, my dad went up there and said, what about the other one? And they, they called me in two weeks later. Because it was a family deal at Warner Gear, and it worked good. We find that out years later that it didn't work too good, them hiring not family. So whenever you got chewed out or anything you didn't do right, they went to dad and he'd come to me. Boy, you're messing up now. Let's do it right. So we went back in, we'll do it right. It wasn't them telling me what to do, it was dad telling me what to do. And, and that when was... you're young in, you know, you didn't come in at midnight and go to work next morning at seven or one o'clock in the morning and stuff like that. So <laughs> them was the good old days. When did it change? Pardon? When did, did it change from the good old? You say that those were the good old days. Is well, the time that it changed. The time changed. That's just like when I went to work there. Uh, I had one car, and then when I went to work, I ended up with five cars and a motorcycle. And uh, Dad said it wasn't no car lot, so I'd get rid of some of the cars. So the rest of the family had cars there too. All of us still living there. Were you able to afford so many cars because it paid so well? Or? Yeah, that's right. We made good money out there. Warner Gear was a blessing to us. Give us all good jobs. Just uh, people you had to work with, you didn't get along with. <laughs> Can you describe some of those experiences? Pardon? Can you describe some of those experiences? Why didn't well, you get along with them, was it? And when I had 27 years, I got fired and uh, because I run parts out of print limit. But they used them all, and I got called four months later back, and you straighten your act up then to try to keep everything going right. So I was out there for four months, and then they called me back. The union got me back. Said, now I worked 35 years on midnight shift. Then five, last five years I worked on day shift. So the union kind of saved your job there, huh? Well, yeah, and well, what the rest of the family working there, they looked at it too. I try and think that the guy that was the head dog then was named was Dean Boyles. And I mean, he was fair. Uh, matter of fact, he called me in there, he said, I heard you hated Warner Gear, and I said, no, never hated Warner Gear, just hate some of the people you work with. And he put me back to work and put me on probation. And so I made it 40 years in. There was a lot of hard times there. Between when I hired him from being laid off, being then there, you work maybe three months, laid off two months. You work six months, laid off five months, three months, four months, back and forth like that. I think until 1970 is when I worked the rest Never got laid off anymore after that. A lot of experience, yeah. I worked in that whole factory from one end to the other. What was it like being laid off? What'd you do? Horrible, because you didn't have any money. Well, I, nowadays, these uh, people get laid off. They get $300, $350, $400 unemployment. We got $26, $13. Of 
court that good then. It wouldn't be now. So, no, I hired in. I was on the, what's called outside labor. David? David. Sit by that Carl there. Uh, yeah, I was on outside labor. That's where you worked outside all the time. And you worked in and out, in and out, until I went inside and worked on uh, inspection. I went from inspection to production, then went from production to uh, in the assembly line. Worked there the rest of the time. I met my wife in there. Did one, you? The one I'm married to now. Tell me about that. She, uh, she got 25 years in. She'd been retired now, going on four years now. Maybe I should have brought her along too. <laughs> <laughs> she probably wouldn't know you wanted to interview her. We worked together for, I'd say, 10 years. I mean, she worked there before I met her, and then we got working in the same department. I'd help her, and she'd help me. We, we was on midnight shift, and we went together for 17 years before we got married. Were there a lot of uh, relationships like that where, where people met there? future uh, wife at work? There are quite a few of them that met their wives inside when we get We know some other ones that met their wives through there when they hired women. At that time, they didn't hire women. When I went hired in there, they had, um, oh, I don't know what you call old women or whatever it was during the war. They hired in and during the war. And, we worked with them, and there was a period they didn't hire no women. Then I think they made them start hiring women and black and everything else then at that time. So we all got along just fine. You couldn't find a better place to work. We had a lot of fun there. We thought it was a fun factory, really, to tell you the truth. What kind of fun things did you guys do? Oh, you wouldn't believe it. Can't tell everything, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, for instance, guys would run out of there. They put their lunch boxes in rows. Then they, as they rang out, they run along and grab their lunch box. Some might put gears in them or shavings in there, and they just tear them apart. And we played jokes on each other, and, and just a lot of different things. But we always had a good time. Everybody helped everybody. I mean, if you didn't get done, somebody go over and help you get done. And that's the way it was on a percentage at that time. We made whatever you put out what you got paid. So everybody helped everybody make the same amount of money. So it was like a big happy family, really. So it was, was it piecework? I, I know yeah, it was all piecework. Everybody had their job to do and everybody had to put out so much. And then it was all in a group where we'd all try to think how much money we wanted to make. And we made that. We made sure that guy put out the same as you did, so we'd all make that amount of money. If you had one over here asleep and then make nothing, well, he cut you down. And you made sure he got his done, too. So that's why I said everybody helped everybody. What how, what'd you feel about those guys that were holding back the group? Well, that, eventually, that when they held back the group, we tried to find a way to get rid of them. But the uh, biggest part of the time, none of them did have anybody back. They wanted to make the same as everybody else. Oh, you had a little few that didn't want to do anything, so they fancy to get rid of them one way or another. You know, they found out ways to get rid of them. Or they didn't want to work with us, I don't know. Um, if I can, I'd like to talk, talk to you a little bit about Board Warner within the community, Muncie. In the Muncie community, community of Muncie? Yeah. Um, what kind of role did Board Warner play in, in the Muncie community? They played a big role in this town. I mean, with the people they hired and worked there. At that, When I hired in at Warner Gear in, in 1959, there were 7,000 people worked there. Now here, when they're now in the last, before they shut down, couldn't believe it, they'd only be, you know, 200. In my time of going through Warner Gear, you told me they were going to move out. I said, you're wrong. Never will move out. After 100 and I think we went to 100-year 
deal if they had a big party out there in 100 years. That, that's the largest factory, or the one that's been at one place at one time, over 100 years. So who would ever think they'd move out? I told my wife they'd never move out, but they made a believer out of me, they moved. Gosh, we plant 7,000 people and their families. What kind of, how were Borg Warner wor workers looked at uh, within the community by those who didn't work at Borg Warner? Were well, they special? a lot of times you, you run on the people who said, well, you work at Warner Gear, you got the money. Well, we did. Why don't you try to get on there or whatever? I mean, everything you've done, well, you work at Warner Gear, you got the money to do it. Well, we did have the money to do it, if you use your head right. I come out, I feel like smelling like a rose myself. I, uh, I done good in Warner Gear. And I think everybody else should if they used their head. If they wasn't an alcoholic or whatever, spend their money or throw it away, a lot of them did. I know a lot of them outside, so. How do you feel the, the union, the union presumably was a big part of, of getting all these benefits for you, is that right? The union, I think, done us a lot of good back in our younger days. That long as we went, it got weaker and weaker and just, you got people got crazy, wanted to do things that you really didn't want to do but you went along with them because you tried to keep brothers, you know. There are times when I went in Warner Gear, when I first hired in, I had to work the afternoon shift. And I would go in and everybody would be walking out. I'd say, where are everybody going? We're going on a strike. I, they wrote us up every time we went on a strike. I had enough write-up to hang them like uh, twisters down out of 128 of them. That's how many times we walked out. So. Mm -hmm. That was in the old days. Nowadays, you walk out, you didn't have a job. So, like I said, it was a lot better in the younger days than it was in the days now. Yeah, a lot of them just, I don't know, they, did, they didn't take care of each other, not like they did in the older days. Then they got, well, you're the old timer, you're the old timer. I know when I hired in there, I thought they had a lot of old timers. Then when I got up to be the old timer, then it was different. So it made a lot of difference. Do you feel like it, it might have been that, that a lot of the older workers had ties, their fathers had worked there? Did you see that change over time? Do you think that's what hurt the union and, and kind of the brotherhood or the? Yeah, because nobody wants to stick together. Not like they did in the old days. Everybody took care of everybody in the old days. In, in younger days, they didn't. They just. Like on their own, you know, you do what you want to do, or you do it, so nobody helped each other. It just, it kept splitting up. You know, they just got away from each other. It wasn't fun no more. Oh, the longer we went, the less fun you had. We looked forward to going uh, in there every day. We had fun. I mean, we didn't do nothing. Everybody got the work done. David. That's the other brother walking outside there. He's looking for us. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of fun. Matter of fact, when we would meet in the cafeteria when we worked days, all of us brothers in the cafeteria, we'd be sitting in a circle. The circle was this big. Then before you know it, the circle was this big. All of them would charm in together, want to know what we'd do. And all of us brothers together, we had fun. Well, he would. We'll look forward to going in and seeing each other every day. So there was never no fight. Did management change over time? Yeah, a lot of them changed. Management, it, some really got bad. Some management really got bad and they wanted to show their authority. You know, instead of having fun and working together, they worked against us. That's what it feel like to us. They worked, I guess, for what we did. But we still kept together. Union people always kept together. But you get over in the corner and talk about management, doing this, managing. We knew a way to take care of them. There's a way to take care of them, and get them on our side. 
Most of them did. Most of them come right out of the union into management. And you remind them they were the union brother at one time, many times. And I think that worked with them too, knowing that they're, they're union at one time. Can you go into any more detail about about just the, the, the effect of this clo the, the closing of Warner Gear and the opportunity that you had uh, growing up to, to get a, get a good job at Warner Gear and how with that with the plant closing that's gone. Can you can you maybe elaborate a little bit like you know, just looking back on on, on uh, kind of the opportunity you had and how that, that's going to be different for the people that are that are now 19 like you were. Well. Back then, we know that at that time that you could go do this or that, or you could buy this or that, and you could pay for it. But now, the ones that were coming up nowadays got over their heads of spending money, and where they're a lot right now in trouble, a lot of trouble, because they were working a lot of overtime and everything at one time when they're working good. Now they can't pay for what they got, and they've lost it. If they didn't use their head like we did, we would buy and pay for it. Well, they had the plastic cards and they used them and used them, but never paid them off. That's where a lot of them are in trouble right now. My wife met three of her, or five of her girls that she worked with the other day and told us things that was happening. Say, I haven't been in there in 12 years. How much different it changed in 12 years with everybody. Everybody got hating each other. What kind of things did... I don't know. It's just... Uh, they didn't like this one or that one or what they was doing. This and got to do this. Nothing got to do that. They Like they picked on my... When you was a good worker, they worked on you hard. You find out they always come to you to do this, do that, and the ones that didn't do that because they didn't want to ask them. It's more trouble to manage, but to ask them where they could ask us and we'd do it without any argument. We knew what they was doing for us. We was doing them favors and they do us favors. So that's the reason we got along when we was younger. That's why I said it was a fun factory when we went in there, had a good time. But later on, you act like you didn't want to go in there because you had to go in there and meet all these hypocrites and everything else in there. So it sounds like there's a, definitely a generational thing where af after a certain point, uh, you know, the kids just weren't as hard working. Is that something that you would be fair to say? Yeah. Well, it seems like when they hired family, everybody stayed family. They quit hiring family. Then it wasn't the family no more. They just against each other. You took care of your brothers and sisters. Later on, you, they didn't take care of brothers and sisters. They was on their own. Well, I don't like him and I don't like you. And that's the way it went. So it, I, that seemed like to just split everybody up. You had little groups that just, you know who the groups was. You go to this group there, or if you was met their group, you went over there with them, talked to them, you didn't, you stayed away, you went over in your own corner. That's why everybody, in the later years, nobody wanted to do that, you know, stay in the group and keep care of each other. That's the reason why I worked midnight shift. You didn't have that big a problem. I'd say for 12 years, I worked by myself on the midnight shift. That's when I met my wife, she was on the midnight shift too. We had one end, she had one end of the factory and I was the other end. So we meet each other at lunchtime. Did you find reasons uh, during your shift to kind of make your way down there? And uh... <laughs> Yeah, when you worked day shift, you had all the big shots walk around. What are you doing down here? Well, I shouldn't be here, but I was. And so midnight shift, you didn't have that problem because big management wasn't in there to bother you. Wonder what you's doing. Well, if you got done, I got done all the time, but so I'd go down and see her or help her out, try to get her work done. So she'd be done. Were these relationships out in the open 
uh, people that at first, or did, did you kind well, of period where it they, was secret? Well, our relationship, everybody talked about it, but you heard that old saying, stick stone, break your bones, word will never harm you, and that, that's the way we went. She was divorced, and I was divorced, so we were just going with each other. Like I said, we went together 17 years before I got married. Did management ever have anything to say about relationships within, uh, among, you know, between workers? Pardon? Did, did management ever discourage it? Well, kind of I, they knew it went along, there was nothing they could do. Well, matter of fact, we lived with each other, so we rode back the same car and we saved money that way. Same car and eat the same meals together and everything else. I, we got married uh, three weeks before I retired. So if I died, she got my pension and stuff like that. Otherwise, she wouldn't have got it. Like I said, and then uh, a, lot of th a lot of people didn't know that the union or the reunion was wrong. <clears throat> when a man worked in there and died, his wife got his pension and retirement and everything else. When, a, like me and her, was married, and I wanted to go on her insurance and everything retired, it, the insurance is better. No, I couldn't. Because if I did that and she'd have died, then I'd have gone by my own insurance. Now, you figure that one out. It was with a man a dying, his wife got that. Well, but when his wife worked there and she died, he didn't get it. That wasn't in the contract. I told the president and all that about it, and they said, no, it ain't, no, it ain't. Because I've been out 12 years, and it was still that, it's still that way now. And they couldn't figure out what was going on. That, like I said, they were where the union was wrong. He did. He did so I got, I'm on, a, I'm on a separate insurance from what my wife is right now. She's got one, and I got one, our own. But a man and wife working there, they're on the same insurance. Like I said, you figure that one out. And they never did ever change it. How is the insurance that, uh, that you Pardon? guys... Pardon? How is the insurance that you guys walked away with as retirees? Um, was the 30 and out? Does it take care of you? Well, I didn't... Yeah. No, what, you mean when I retired? Mm -hmm. No, I stayed on my own insurance. It wasn't through the company? Pardon? I'm just wondering what it's like to retire... If the uh, if the thirty and out if that if that really you know that was a big thing that you know thirty and out um, I'm wondering if, if that was if that takes care of you if the, the if you if you use your head right yeah I knew I was going to retire me and my wife well me and me and her go, well we wasn't married yet but I said I'm going to retire in five years so we doubled up on everything so. We didn't have to pay for something when I retired. I don't have no second job. Well, I do and I don't, but I own apartment houses and I run them. Before that, I worked three jobs. I built houses and then and run my apartment house and worked at Warner Gear. I averaged two hours sleep a night. <laughs> and then what I could get at work, <laughs> sneak in here and there, and but I wore out all the time, so. Heard that from several, from a couple guys. Uh, how much, you know, how little sleep you got, and how much you worked. Well, we got. I mean, like you said, we got in there and got it done. When I was in there, I tried to find the easiest way. I see nowadays that people, you try to show them something, they always want to do it the hard way. They never think about doing it the easiest way. Now, like I had put something over here, and it took me three seconds to go over here and do it and I can do it one second over here, I'd go over there. That's the way it cut down and got done. That's the way everybody was. We figure out the easiest way. Everything was timed out when we would work. When they finally come in there with the electric boxes and all that, they measured here and they measured there and give you so much time here and so much time there and you kept your mouth shut and said, I ain't gonna tell you about this one second job over here. And you did faster. That's the way everybody got done. They worked together doing that. But we wouldn't tell management that. 
they thought they had all the brains up there. So, well, we're going to get them to do this. And we do it different ways. That's the way we always got done. There's a lot of time we only work four hours a day in there. When I was on the midnight shift, I'd done it so good. I'd done it in two hours. This is the way you just had to do it. And you didn't tell them how you did it. I had machinery run the same way, and I didn't tell them how I run them. I put extra lines on there, water lines, blow this out, cool that out, and my machine got done. How'd you get done so early? But if I had told them, I'd have got a $50 war bond. But I didn't figure I'd tell them because I got done quicker. That's the way we worked together and just done machinery like that. What'd you do with the uh, spare time? Sleep. Well, that's the way me and my wife worked, like I said, for 10 years. I'd run her machine and run my machine. We could do it because it's all automatic. All you had to do is keep an eye on it. You're supposed to stay there and watch it. And I knew what they was doing. She could take a nap and I could take a nap. We just helped each other out. Everybody did it on the line. If they just listen how you did it. That's one of the reasons I got fired because they would come to me and I'd tell them how to do it. And go in there and tell management, well, I'd say, you guys tell them. Well, they were scared of them. I wasn't. So um, when I run the parts out of print lima, that's when they fired me. The thing of it is, it was run over 24 hours instead of eight hours. And the other two was, dad was a boss somewhere, or my cousin was something else. I wasn't. So they fired me for the whole 24 hours. And like I said, it all, all depends who would you run against. The guy that I fired me, he didn't like me and I didn't like him. The guy brought me back, I liked him and he liked me. Like one day we went in there in management and I said, they were sending us home all the time, running out of parts, running out of parts. His name was Al Straub. And I stopped him in the aisle one day and I said, I thought you said we worked seven or five days a week eight hours a day, why are you sending us home all the time? He told me to get off his back. And he came down and apologized. He said, you're right. We ain't going to do this no more. And we didn't. He got in there and got it fixed, what he's supposed to do. Now, when you went, when you, when you went to sleep, was there a secret spot within, within this huge factory? Well, there wasn't or nobody just, around. Just, I mean, where I was at, I could sit in chair and sleep. Now, well, I can go back, go back a lot of times back when I worked down in the gray on at midnight shift. And we talked about, we had rats in there that long. They got in the barrels and stuff and we'd drown them and kill them. And we had rats in there. We had a lot of fun in there do, doing that, just killing rats in there at one time. But it was dark and dingy. So you had cats in there that didn't have hair on them or nothing where the oil would leak on the cats and take all the hair off of them. You couldn't touch them. You didn't know if it was a rat or a cat. So <laughs> a lot of different things that we did in there. I'm telling you, we, that's why I said it was a fun factory. We had a lot of fun on We pulled jokes on each other and just laughed and do our work. We got done, everyone else got done. But we had fun doing it. As the years went by, it just kept getting less and less all the time. It, I think it was the, the people themselves. They didn't want to have fun. Some of them come in there didn't want to have fun. But like I said, that's when the family deal was there. Family took care of family. And you and I were like family. When you was one, one of us getting work done, we was family. If you didn't work with us, you wasn't family. And they finally tried to find a way to make it harder for them so we could get rid of him and get another one in there and make it a family deal. And that's the way it was, family-like. Like I said, we had fun. Can you pinpoint any time in particular when that stopped? I may have asked you that earlier, but... When that stopped? Yeah, we're talking 70s, mid-70s, late 70s, early 70s. Pardon? Can you put a time, time frame on this? Like when that kind of stopped? Was it just... Uh, I think up until... From 59 to 1970, I got laid off in 1970, 71. I was off 
71, se never, I never worked in there in 72, I was laid off, 14 months. Matter of fact, we didn't know if we'd ever get back. We got back and I never was laid off after that. But after that, it seemed like it changed. Then's when they started hiring all the newer ones. My wife hired in there in 79. That's when they started hiring a lot of the women. And then, well, these women can't do this and they can't do that. You go over and help them do it. No, they hired in there. They're making the same amount of money I am. Let them do it. Well, this got a bad back or well, she hurt her arm or the same way with the guys. Well, he can't do it. So they still come after the guys that done the good work and everything changed them. Well, I'm gonna find out a way to how to get around that. And that's when it changed. That's when they started hiring everybody. They didn't hire family then. You couldn't get family in there. I had two daughters I tried to get in or couldn't do it. Well, we can't do that anymore. That's when they went wrong, when they quit hiring family. Family took care of family. Like the old mafia, you've heard of that. Family take care of family. And that's the way everybody was. We'd have dinner, picnics, and everything else, and there was all family, like I said. Everybody liked everybody. They very seldom ever found anybody that didn't like anybody. Can you talk a little bit about uh, about the kind of union picnics and stuff? Was that something you took your daughters to? And was that a big part of your life? Well, my daughters? You know, just the fam the family atmosphere of the factory, whether it be the, the union picnics you always hear about, Spring what is Springwater Park, is that right? And, uh, you know, all the leagues, basketball. Were you involved in any of that? Well... After that, we played baseball, a lot of baseball for the union and stuff like that for the company. Everybody went. We had co ed playing baseball. And we done a lot of that outside. But it seemed like, well, when somebody got hired, I didn't get my daughters hired in there, and it kind of made me mad. That same way my brother Dave, his, his boy tried to get in there too. And uh, he, he was top of the list on tests and everything. They still didn't hire him. That's because his family, but he's got a better job, really. He went to a different factory and got a better job. But that's when they cut the family out. And I think that's where the thing changed at Warner Care. When they cut the family out, they cut each other out. They wanted the family to help everybody else, and they didn't want to do it because they wasn't family, really. Everybody took care of the family. Brothers, sisters, no matter who it is. You go out there and yeah, oh yeah, I remember your brother. Yeah, yeah, I remember your brother. I worked with that brother. Yeah, we worked with each other everywhere. Everywhere you went in that factory, you run on somebody's brother. And we got along. You felt like you was already family. You could meet him one day and felt like you was family. Yeah, my brother worked that. Oh yeah, I know him. Yeah, well that's the brother. Well, we took care of each other. Right there automatically. He didn't say, well, He's coming there trying to take over. No. He's family like the rest of us. Fred, um, that, that's really all I've got. Um, but at this point, I, I, you know, I'd like to give you an opportunity to say you're anything to go else. Low, you're going to have to go a little bit louder. Well, I was going to say, I'd like to give you an opportunity to say uh, anything else um, that, you, that you have in mind that you'd like to, like to say about Warner Gear. You'd like us to know about Warner Gear, working at Warner Gear. Um, just anything, whatever pops in your head here. I wish that it's still here. I hate to see him leave. Because I've told her, I don't know how many people, Warner Gear and never leave Muncie. That Muncie itself, Warner Gear. You worked at Warner Gear, you might as well have felt like you're the king of the town. Because you worked at Warner Gear. Everybody worked at Warner Gear. We liked it. But it's like things changed and they started losing. I don't know when they got management in there, it seemed like that. They didn't try to get the jobs in there as they wanted to get in there. Of course, I think a lot of it was union too, was trying to get too much or too less. Nobody wanted to give up nothing. They wanted more, more, more. And they didn't get more. They just run themselves. The union and them both run themselves right out of a job, asking too much for each other instead of compromise with each other and try to figure out we can do this and they could do that. I think in, I think a couple of years ago when they t 
took the tax deduction away from Warner Gear when it really started falling down. But they didn't want to give none. Like I said, they were trying to cut us, cut us, cut us. And they, like I said, they didn't work together. I did find out something the other day, and I don't know if it means anything or not, but like my wife went and met five other gals that they worked with. They had a big fight out there in the union hall, or in the office with the union, that they got 300 people quit. Why'd they get in a fight for? Because of the union didn't figure it out. You guys quit. They worked there for eight, nine months and had vacation money coming. They quit, they didn't get vacation money. So they said, well, why don't you figure this out and tell us? If we quit, we wouldn't get our vacation money. I don't know what else they're gonna lose. I don't know if it goes down the road, if we work there 25 years, if they lose 25 years of service or not later on down the road because they quit. You give up everything after you quit. See, if you worked there 25 years and turned 60, 65 and retired, you get that service signed back. You get some amount of money. Now, since they quit, I don't know if they'll get anything or not. I'm going to ask the union or when they have our next meeting if they're going to get that or not. So that's one of the reasons they had a big fight and a big blow up. That's the reason we didn't have no union meeting in the last month we was here. Because they're afraid there's going to be too big a fight out there. You're counting on your union brothers to do right. After I left, I think everything quit. I don't know. It just when we was younger and had union officials in there, you just like you said, I tell you, like family, they told you the truth. And they find out things. But after I left, it just who we can get in there and so they don't have to work. They didn't have to do nothing but sit around in the office and think of doing nothing. Union people didn't work at all. They just sat in there and done nothing. I think that the company wanted that to work their way, to get what they wanted, let them sit around and do nothing. When I went in there, the union people worked four hours a day and then the union people for four hours a day. They did that for, I think, 15 years and then it started changing. Well, you only have to work two hours a day, the union people. That's the committeeman, president, and all them. Then it got down to, well, you don't have to work. Well, you know, I was off the other day, and you seen one of your union brothers uh, down to the bar drinking and eating and getting paid. So that starts fighting each other. What are they doing down there, you know? It changed everything. You can't do that and be a union brothers and sisters like we should have been. Well, I think that's that's all. Tell the law. Yeah, thanks a lot, Fred. <laughs> okay.